More scan on all you gamers, today we're back with a little bit more Diablo 2 Resurrected and today I'm going to be going over something that you definitely should know. So if you're like me and maybe you haven't been playing Diablo 2 for as long as some of the other gamers, maybe you've only got into it when you've been playing Diablo 2 Resurrected, the latest incarnation, then this will definitely help you out with your gambling, especially for that end game gambling. So if that interests you, stay tuned, that's coming up next. Welcome back week guys and girls, as always for all things gaming, for all things Xbox, then why not hit that subscribe and bell icon, I bring you all the latest and greatest content, hints, tips, guides and builds, and just some fun game plan reviews of all the latest Xbox games. But for today I'm here to show you something that you may well not know, I myself didn't know this, and to be perfectly honest I wish I had, because it would have saved me an absolute fortune. This is probably aimed a little bit more towards players that have just picked up Diablo 2 Resurrected, or maybe they've come back to the franchise and cannot remember everything that they used to do in the game. This little trick right here will save you an absolute fortune and will make it so that you can just get an abundance more gambles. And as we know it can take a really long time to get what you're after, if you're after those crazy rare items like Stone of Jordan or anything such as that, you'll probably want to know how to get the best from this. Now like I said, if you were doing gambling, one of the main things you're going to want to aim for is this right here. So especially for endgame, Geed's Fortune. This right here is good for a lot of purposes because it gives you a little bit of everything. So 153% extra gold from monsters, that can go up and down depending on how lucky you are and I'll chuck the stats over on the right. But you're not after that for this, we're after just gambling. Again it is really good because you also get a better chance of getting magical items. That in itself is amazing and can be why you'll keep it in your inventory pretty much at all times if you wanted to. It definitely won't do your build any harm and finding those items because you've got this on is one of the best things around it. But another reason for it is because of that last one right there reduces all vendor prices by 12%. Now I've been a bit unfortunate with this and the highest roll is actually 15% which is quite a bit higher than 12 obviously if you're doing it very very often. So especially if you've been saving up a lot of money, say for example you're spending 10 million in gold, straight off the bat you'll want to be able to get your vendor prices down. 15% although it sounds like it's not the most in the world, depending on how long you're going to be gambling for and at endgame where most of the time with your money you probably will be spending on gambling, it's definitely definitely worth having. But Geed's Fortune is also a very hard drop to get and it's down to a lot of RNG. If you're not lucky enough to pick it up in endgame, if you're not lucky enough to be able to trade for it, you may not be able to acquire this. Now 15% is really nice, but 15% is only applicable if you're able to find Geed's Fortune, which like I said, RNG being RNG, down to a bit of luck unless you are able to trade it. So how about if I tell you there's actually another way to get another 15% and that it will stack on top of that if you already have the Geed's Charm. So what you're going to want to do, and the easiest way that I find, is just bop straight back to normal difficulty. Remember, gambling doesn't actually matter what kind of difficulty you're at, it's down to your player level. So if you want to gamble in normal, or nightmare, or whatever you want to do it on hell and stuff, it doesn't actually affect what's going to roll. So the main thing we're going to do, we're going to bop back to here, and we're going to go to Chelsea, and like I said, I've got this on normal difficulty. The main reason I've done that is because... I wanted to go through her wares. And on normal difficulty, you get a heck of a lot that rolls grey items. And hopefully I haven't botched this up. Aha, there we go. Right, so what we're after is a free socket missile weapon. But pretty much just think of it as a free socket bow. You can get crossbows as well. I always, for some reason, tend to find that it rolls on these normal short bows and stuff. But just a free socket bow is perfect. So make sure you buy that and that's in your inventory now. And remember, if you aren't able to actually get that, so say for example all of that wasn't what you wanted, you can always change the stock. All you gotta do is bop straight out of tan, as soon as that comes up, enter in the Bloodmore, pretty much as soon as the writing comes up on any tan that you're in, or encampment I should say, you're gonna jump straight back in, go back to your vendor as soon as I start walking the right way, and click back on her, and her stock will have rotated again. So as you can see, these ones are slightly different now, or very different, should I say. Do that as many times as you want, 
on normal difficulty and eventually you'll find one of these crossbows or one of these bow ah nice and easy that was lucky another one with three sockets honestly it normally doesn't take that long take that with a pinch of salt though because obviously rng is rng it might take you a lot longer than it has myself but from here what you're going to do is you're going to chuck in some runes and these are very mid game runes some are quite early some are mid they're not actually that hard to get hold of at all and the runes in question are this one right here a tier rune required level 13 nice and easy to get hold of a tail rune required level 17 again not that difficult and the highest of the bunch but again not too difficult at all is an am rune if you've been playing on later difficulties like that hell setting you're almost definitely going to have picked these up even in nightmare you can pick these up quite easily if you're lacking any just run some of the cantus or something such as that but all in all this is just really an easy rune word to make that is well well worth having and keeping in your stash pretty much forever for this gambling purposes so like i said you've got your free socket bow just there you're going to chuck it in in this order so tier and next is your towel and very last just over here is your am and as you can see now we've created the rune word edge so tier towel and am creates edge you now get level 15 forms aura when equipped plus 35% increased attack speed, plus one to maximum damage, 354% damage to demons, 208% damage to undead, plus 75 damage over five seconds with poison, 7% life stolen per hit, prevents monster heal, plus nine to all attributes, and plus two to mana after each kill. All of that is pretty nice, to be perfectly honest. It's probably not endgame viable in the slightest, but it's quite a big wall of text, and it's quite nice, and it's not what we're here for in the slightest. We are just after this very last one right down the bottom here. Reduces all vendor prices by 15%. Now, like I said, I didn't actually know this existed. I've been going through a bit of the internet, found out it did, and cannot believe how much gambling I've been doing without knowing about this. This right here ups whatever I've got. You think a max Geeds is 15%. If you're lucky, you very likely will not have a max one. It rarely rolls that. Most of the time, you're probably going to get a 12 or 13. If you're lucky, you might get a 14 or 15. But it's rare. They're rare to get hold of, and they're very costly as well if you are trading for them. This right here, easy to make. Very, very, very simple runes, and it gives you 15 straight away. That, mixed with what I've got here, is going to give me 27 off of my gambling there. For endgame activities, that's absolutely amazing. If I bop over to Geeds, just over here, and like I said, it doesn't matter that I'm on normal difficulty, but if you want to jump over to Hell just to feel a bit better, or just to start gambling whenever you are doing your Hell activities, do it there. But, just so I can show you... He says not having enough money. One moment. 12 seconds late. So as you can see, I've grabbed what I needed. I've got the bow right here, the edge bow. And just over here, I have the Geed's fortune charm. So now if I go up here, it's going to tell me that I've knocked off whatever I've got for the actual Geed's fortune. So this is down to 44,000 now. And this one just down here is down to 55. So obviously we're knocking off the 12%, which is nice but we can do better and I was a little bit worried because I completely forgot how this worked but if you'll have a look we've got the edge bow in our inventory along with that so why are we not taking off more pretty simple we haven't equipped this yet nice and easy make sure that you equip the edge bow pop whatever you need to back in your inventory you've now got this right here so your 12 percent hopefully 15 if you've got a better one than myself and this one right up here you've got your edge rune word and now when you're doing your gambling, so for example, this right here, 36,500. That's absolutely massive. Honestly, this is well worth knowing. If you're trying to get some really nice stuff, say for example, you're trying to do coronets and you get some nice rolls on that, or you're trying to go for that Stone of Jordan or even the Maras, make sure you do this as it's just going to save you a lot of time because you're going to be able to get a lot more out of it. Honestly, it's well worth having both before you start your endgame gambling. But if you can't get this, this right here, nice and easy to make, well worth doing, and you'd kind of be a bit silly not to do it if you're going to be spending millions upon millions trying to gamble endgame. 
Now I'm going to try my luck and get a few of these and fingers crossed for me. Let's see how we go. Yeah, so pretty much same as usual, absolutely nada. It still means that I've got a lot of money left over and I may well have a bit of luck further down the line. As always guys and girls, hopefully this has helped a few of you out. It's definitely something I wish I'd known a few weeks back, but it's well worth knowing now. For all things gaming, for all things Xbox, take care. I'll see you on the next day.